The Bad Batch Episode 13 Into the Breach On Tantis, Omega begins to be introduced to her fellow Project Necromancer test subjects one by one, who are Eva, Jack, Sammy, and Bairn. Which, okay, cool, we now know the names of all the test subjects and all, but I'm kinda curious how they know Bairn's name. As after all, he's only a baby and doesn't even speak at all. And besides, it's not like the Empire calls them by their real names either. So that was a bit of a ha huh moment when I first heard it. Unless, of course, the test subjects themselves gave the baby a name, and the Bairn is not really the baby's name, but yeah. Anyway, Omega tells the kids that she's escaped from Tantus before, and would you know it? She plans to do so again using a passage behind their cell walls. Now, I think it starts to say something about your super duper tightly secured base where a child is confident enough to break free from it not once, but twice. Besides, yeah, to be fair, she had crosshair the first time around, so she did it with adult supervision. But if Omega thinks that she's escaping from Tantis with a crew of Rugrats tagging along with her, then I'm going to have a lot of questions for both the Empire and the show's writers. There's also a moment where Omega nearly gets caught in the act by Scalder, while she begins making a hole in the wall by removing a bunch of wall tiles. Only for her to magically reinstall them all the second Scalder sneaks up on her. Mmm, yeah, I get this is a cartoon and all, but there's no way Omega could have pulled this off in the time that she had. Realistically, she would have got caught, placed in a special hold, separated from the rest of the subjects. But yeah, obviously if that were to happen, then Omega's little plan to escape a second time would not work at all. Elsewhere, the Bad Batch and Rampart rendezvous with Echo and a stolen Imperial shuttle, which they then use to infiltrate an Imperial relay station on Coruscant to find the coordinates for Tantis. This part, I'd say, is really the only good part of the episode, although the Batch deciding to go into the Imperial Station undercover while wearing their normal suits, only blacked out rather than sneak in with TK armor, kind of bothered me at first. As, let's be real here, Rampart walking into a base with three stormtroopers would be less suspicious. Actually, not suspicious at all. Rather than having three dudes all wearing unique, non-standard issue wear follow him in. I mean, one Imperial literally makes this remark at one point, and Rampart himself beforehand as well states that the clones will stand out like overheated Gamorreans. Which, yes they did, and this was yet another only in a children's cartoon moment too. <laughs> because this plan would not have worked out in a more, you know, competent and realistic show like Andor. Although, to be fair, after a second watch through, I can't say I hate it as, on the other hand, it at least doesn't rely on the overused Stormtrooper disguise trope. And on the plus side, we do get to see the Batch's armor how it originally looked like on the very first mission that they had before they customized it. So that was neat to see, even though, again, that plan probably wouldn't be a good idea had this not been a cartoon. Still, I don't mind it as much anymore, so I'll just let it pass. Aside from this, everything else in this entire sequence is great, as it's basically another Bad Batch heist, but this time involving Rampart, which surely does add a different flavor of humor and perspective mixed in and that I enjoyed. They later realize that they're unable to simply extract the coordinates to Tantis from the station databanks. So Echo decides to sneak aboard a science shuttle bound for Tantis and disable its proximity sensors. While it is a very risky move, it does pay off big time and allows the others to dock onto the vessel in their stolen shuttle at the very last minute just as it enters hyperspace. And a little tension just before the credits was a nice way to spice things up. Overall, I had some mixed feelings about this episode, despite still liking it. 
And this mostly stems from the head-scratching cartoon moments and the precedent it's setting up about a child being smarter than the entire galaxy's government. To the point that she'll be able to easily escape a secluded prison for a second time in a row. Which I'm starting to get worried about that they might actually be serious about this and actually go aboard with this idea. Having Omega escape with the kids and just have the Bad Batch show up at the very end and not really need to do anything since she already did all of the legwork. Ha, <sighs> yeah, I'd be disappointed if that were to happen, but also I can't say I'd be surprised at this point anyway. And that was my take on this episode of The Bad Batch. Let me know what you all thought about the episode in the comments below, and if you haven't already, remember to like this video, subscribe to the channel for more, and I'll see you on the next one.